So, Stephen, tell me a little bit about your childhood. Where, where um, did you grow up? I grew up in Bremerton, Washington, which is on Puget Sound, uh, you know, overlooking Seattle. It's a kind of Kitsap Peninsula that looks out on a big body of water. And, and my brother's a sculptor and a painter. And together we built these little houses in the backyard, like a tree house with two stories, an underground clubhouse. All those years working, making things, constantly making things. So, you know, kind of just intuitively when I came to go to the university, I decided I wanted to be in architecture. I didn't really have any model because the town there is only 30,000 people. Mm -hmm. There was no architects to speak of or anything. Mm -hmm. So how much of your childhood and the growing up in that little town influenced the way you look at architecture? You know, it's being near water uh, is very important. If you look at the long history of my work, there's a lot of water, relations to water, right. and probably that's coming from the way I grew up. Uh, you know, I mean, the sort of stronger forces of nature that I think that everybody should pay closer attention to right. in our world. Architecture is this positive force. Mm -hmm. A building creates an environment, the it environment. creates a place, mm -hmm. it creates a world. You know, the relation of the architecture and the landscape, to me, must start from the beginning. That's the integral experience right. that we experience. It's not something that adds So on. when you design, you already have the landscape in your mind. I mean, I'm trying to think of a whole experience, mm. and it definitely has these relations. And then you went, went to New York after that? The, the art world in New York is what drew me in, mm. not so much the architecture world. That was the late 70s, early yeah. 80s? Yeah. Oh. And I didn't have much work. I was doing some apartments. The main breakthrough was in 1993, mm -hmm. we won the, the the competition for the Contemporary Art Museum in Helsinki, Kiasma. Mm -hmm. And that was like 516 entries, and we won, and that got realized. And the art world loved, you know, the artists loved the spaces that we made there, and it was very controversial. And, and the other day when I was in your office, you were telling me about your watercolor, right? right. You were saying that this is how you usually work, is in the morning you would paint something and every day yeah send it back to the office exactly and then the team was so working I've been working on these kind of drawings since um, 1979 this is by the way just opened on on, the, on November 2nd the Nanjing Museum the Nanjing, yes. and that's the first drawing of it five oh. by seven you know it's a way of uh, it's a way of intuitively you know after you know the program but to intuitively have a, a concept and to think about it in light and space with a small drawing, not just of the concept, but the details. There's the first yeah. drawing of the linked hybrid in Beijing. You know, the sort of four, four passages, and then there, there would be these bridges, and then it, and, and then all these different functions. Mm -hmm. So, so it became, it became a method, uh, which is a really, uh, you know, very yeah. uh, fun way of working. I don't believe in signature architecture. I believe in the architecture of a place. Mm -hmm. You know requires a response that's integral to that. Mm -hmm. And that means, for me, that when I'm making a house on Martha's Vineyard, it's radically different than what I would make for apartments in Beijing. Okay. For me, it's, I'm not interested to have a signature. You know, I, it's a, that's like a product. You know, I, you know, I have a kind of a, a mission that I think architecture changes our lives. Mm -hmm. That makes it also a great challenge and an excitement right. because every every project's different. You know, and I try to make everybody, and then people say, "Oh, you did that before." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> and how how do you, how do the Chinese client like to work with you? One of the things that I've been lucky uh, from the beginning, I wanted to do green architecture. Mm -hmm. So when I had in Nanjing, they also agree for that, and then also linked hybrid. But then another thing is, I, always, I believe that there needs to be an idea that drives the design, an overreaching idea. And I could explain that in a few watercolors and a few sentences. And in, the, and in my experience, the Asian attitude or mind could understand that. Often, in especially in America, where you're working for developers, they don't even want to hear it. They don't, they don't want to hear an idea. What they just want to. They just want to know. They want you to know that it's going to have to cost this much, <laughs> and it has to have that many square feet. Um, so you're saying that the American developers would have less interest in your work than the Chinese. Right. Mm. 
Yeah, that's what I've found. What do you think is the reason? Is it you know why Americans are more conservative than the Chinese? If China seems to be an older country. No, China changed. You know, it's never dull. Right. There's all these layers of interest. Also, there's so many cities. Right. I've never been to Qingdao. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we might have a project in Guilin. I love Guilin. I love yeah, these. Lovely, lovely. You know, this yeah. incredible and environment. And not very urbanized. No. So there's an opportunity to do it differently. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a very interesting place. So if you look at cities in China that are being urbanized in the last 10, 15 years very quickly right. versus European cities or versus New York American right. cities, right? What do you see that Chinese urbanized cities are different and are they closer to your ideals no. or, or? No. Most of what's going on is a tragedy. Mm. The, the things are being, they're not being thought through some very unlivable apartment buildings are being erected cl too close to each other and they're not environmentally correct, they're not green buildings. So our, my project, my project as an architect, as a professor of architecture, is to try to realize models for the future. Mm -hmm. So every project that we've done, I say, and I'm proud and I give a lecture on it, this is what you should try to do. You should try to make space, you should try to make everything without carbon you know, dependency. By the way, I don't think I could ever realize anything like that in America. That's true. No. Every time I try to do, you know, geothermal wells for a developer, they don't want to do it. Why is that? Because they're too cheap. They want immediate returns. They're, they don't hold their buildings. They don't, they're not responsible. People are just interested in fast money mm -hmm. and not the long term. You know, that mm -hmm. the long term is what we all should be interested in, you know. I mean, that's what the legacy that we leave our children, the legacy that we leave the next generation. That's a little bit what's wrong with China right now. And I, I'm people very people say that China is too short term. But I've been surprised. That's not everybody. My experience here has been extraordinarily lucky to have these great clients, these people who are willing to step up and do the, you know, the more ambitious thing and actually stand as a model for for other projects after that. What are your ideal cities like? Cities are about variety mm -hmm. and variety is about different imaginations mm -hmm. being juxtaposed to each other. Ideal doesn't have to be big but if more people would follow the environmental issues mm -hmm. the whole city would be better because mm -hmm. we wouldn't have you know buildings right now uh, are 40 percent of the problem yeah. In American cities, I don't know how it is in China, but so the more the, the 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 more we can have zero, you know, kind of polluting buildings, we're drastically reducing that. So I think that we can make the cities livable and really, you know, restore the environment, restore the landscape, make nature preserves. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's just we need intelligence at the top. No, I, I think I think it's that's a positive. That's definitely a positive. Thank you. Thank you.